I'm not sure what's more annoying, opening narration to quickly get through character backstory, or a slow scroll past photos and items littered around a person's room to accomplish the same purpose. I suppose it depends on which I'm forced to watch. Peter Parker has a copy of The Amazing Spider-Man in his room, and the only questions I have beyond how that even works is does Peter get royalty checks from Disney, and is he worried about the comics revealing his identity to anyone who reads them? All these diagrams and sketches for spider gadgets in Peter's apartment will not clue his landlord into his identity later when said person evicts him and throws out all of his stuff. This is the first of many pegboards full of news clippings about Spider-Man and his villains that will show up in the game. It's as if every bastard who's seen Seven thinks they're clever. Despite the different headlines, the text on these two articles is identical, and the text is just a bit of copy-paste lore mipsum gibberish about far, far away places. You have a smartphone, Peter. Start using a notification app instead of post-it notes. Also, since one of your notes says rent, 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 you should not be making notes to remind you to buy J. Jonah Jameson a dozen red roses and a birthday present for Yuri. I really question what kind of useful aftermarket modifications you can make to a toaster. I hope your webbing is edible, because you just sprayed it all over your toast. Zoom and enhance cliche. On a past due rent notice, five feet away no less. The web slinging in this game is so well done that for the first time ever in an open world game, I don't really feel like using the fast travel whenever I need to get across the city. Though I still do. Hey, I had a schedule to keep. Did you take him down yet? No. We're at Fisk Tower, but still waiting on the warrant. Well, there's your problem. You started the operation before you even had a warrant to arrest Fisk. If you had no warrant when you went in, you just violated his rights, giving him an easy court victory. Well done. You have to wonder what Fisk is hoping to accomplish by fighting the cops in the street. He would stand a much better chance fighting in court with high-priced attorneys. And lock down the airspace. Yuri, you okay? He makes it out of that building, we're gonna lose him. Would you really? It's Manhattan. I think you could trail a very large, rich man pretty easily inside the city. Or the rest of the country, for that matter. Hi, Aunt May. What is all that noise? Watching a superhero movie. That raises the question whether that would be considered fiction or based on true stories, since this is a world with superheroes. Peter's money problems would disappear if he just marketed himself a bit. After all these years, you are still just an ignorant child. That's the voice of Travis Willingham. Not voicing a police officer or a soldier or any other man in uniform. Uh, I don't really know how to process this, so I'll just take a sin off and congratulate him for finally breaking out of the typecast mold he was stuck in. Several tons of concrete was being held up by two human rib cages. Writing your memoirs? Don't forget the hyphen between spider and man. This line made me realize that Spider-Man is the autocorrect of superheroes, because no other hero with man or woman in the name bothers with a hyphen. If you think this will be more than a minor inconvenience... Whoop. Your men just shot up an entire city street and killed police officers in your building. What's your excuse going to be? It's fine, Parker. I invented this equipment. I think I can handle it. That has to be the quickest reassurance to things going wrong that I've ever witnessed. This must be another of those games that a former Bioshock developer worked on, because they stuck that annoying pipe puzzle minigame in it. On a side note, I can't be the only one who's noticed just how much devs brag about being former Bioshock developers. Yuri will serve as Spider-Man's Commissioner Gordon, even going so far as meeting Spider-Man on the roof of the police station. Not exactly trying hard to differentiate this game from the Arkham games, are they? The system went down. Citywide. Every tower. How? They tell me someone sabotaged the central server, and now all the towers are offline. So, a job for trained technicians who would be on call and ready to service valuable company equipment in the event it goes offline? No? You just wanted to add goddamn radio towers into this game as well? What are you working on? Oh, just a side project. <sighs> of course. I guess if you design his equipment, you're bound to be a target too. Peter misses out on the obvious lie that he was just making a costume for Halloween. We even visit a party with people dressed as Spider-Man later. Don't worry. Your secret's safe. Five years ago, you walked in here and told me you were inspired by my mission to help others. Now it's you who inspires me. While I generally like how this game develops Lee and Octavius, just knowing that they will become villains has me waiting for the inevitable heel turn. It's mostly fine in Lee's case because the plot doesn't play coy with him for very long, while Otto doesn't go bad until near the end of the game and his irrationality is explained away with a brain implant. Also, what are the odds that Peter would be working for both of the men who will become the biggest threats to the city? And furthermore, by making Lee and Otto both sympathetic villains whom Peter is close to, it leads to the exact same conflict and resolution. You can start guessing the lines you'll hear right now, such as, This isn't you! And, it's not too late. Think of all the good you've done. This totally belongs to- Don't move. Spider-Man finds MJ's camera hanging on a shelf, a place that she never left it since she carried it with her during her search of Fisk's art gallery. Hey, Pete. That's the voice of Laura Bailey, once again starring in a game alongside Troy- Wait, 
He's not in this game? First Travis, now Laura? Why does this game insist on ruining my regular voice actor's sins? I was on my way to the exit when I saw you. That doesn't explain why you hung your camera on a shelf, then hid. But I can see the game wants to move on without addressing it, so I won't persist. Looks antique. I think I know someone who could help track down where this came from. While you're at it, have him explain how they managed to see while wearing the mask since they don't have eye holes. I'm still glad he makes these fries. Totally. Best in the city. Mix can't be that great. He didn't give you any ketchup for your fries and only serves canned soda. How's how's it going with you? Did, did you get that promotion? What promotion is there to get? Peter works as a research assistant for Dr. Octavius, and he's the only one there other than the doc. Do you remember why we broke up? It was the radioactive semen, right? Love seeing you two together again. <laughs> That's the sound of our disbelief hitting the brakes and reversing to look again with mouse agape that Stan Lee cameos are now appearing in video games. Give it up! You're never gonna catch me! That's what you said last time! It has to be hard having a conversation while being blocks apart, New York traffic directly underneath you, and one of you is jumping around using shockwaves. Some might even say this is a little implausible. Since Lee knows this is the mask his gang wears, he has no reason whatsoever to reveal anything he knows about it. He could have simply said he's never seen it before. Demons, huh? Catchy name. Really? That's a catchy name? Are you that easily impressed? When shutting down Octavius' lab, Norman Osborne's people take a bag, a few boxes, and turn off a monitor or two. And consider that a complete seizure of assets without taking any of the expensive equipment or robotic limbs Octavius was developing. This isn't about safety infractions, is it? I'm trying to help you, Otto. You're free to continue your work in a secure environment at Oscorp. Otto should consider a lawsuit. Osborne is shutting down a city grant funded research lab to benefit his own company that he is still somehow CEO of while being the mayor. There's no we. Without the grant from the city, I can no longer pay you. Well, considering Peter can't even afford rent, you must not have been paying him much. Harry's mom came up with the idea of public laboratories that anyone could use, ensuring they would be turned into friendly neighborhood meth labs almost immediately. Over the course of one cutscene, Manhattan went from having pretty clean looking air to Shanghai in the winter. What's your name? Officer Davis. Call me Jeff. Your parents had a weird sense of irony by naming you after the one and only president of the Confederacy. There's no gap under the door, so I'm not sure how Jeff managed to slide his taser under it. Sound hollow to you? It's a shipping container. It's supposed to be hollow. Lee decided now that Fisk was behind bars that this was the perfect time to make his move and take revenge on Osborne. While that makes sense, what doesn't is how he was able to act so quickly. One assumes he already had his own criminal empire waiting in the wings, but they never made any moves before now. Peter had never even heard of them until the art gallery theft. They even had to arm themselves by stealing Fisk's weapons. Stay here. Hell no. It'll take both of us to stop him. I can appreciate that Jeff is the one person on the force that actually acts like a cop and doesn't hang back and let Spider-Man deal with everything, but he should really hang back and let Spider-Man deal with everything. This fight is 99% Spider-Man and 1% Jeff. Jeff is holding a taser, yet that round he put through the truck windshield was clearly a bullet. Jeff survives this, wasn't even wearing a seatbelt. New York actually has laws to prevent evictions like this, where all of your stuff is dumped in the garbage while you're not at home. They also have to give you up to 30 days notice before eviction, and a rent pass due notice is not the same as an eviction notice. Hi, sanitation, this is Eddie. Yeah, hi, uh, I'm trying to track down some items that were accidentally picked up from a dumpster outside my apartment. Dumpster number. Peter has somehow stumbled upon the unicorn of city sanitation workers, one that will actually pick up the phone and answer your questions instead of telling you to fuck off. Please be here, please be here. Yes! Peter has never heard of backups or cloud storage. After chickening out of asking to sleep on MJ's couch and Black Cat being a DLC character the game wants you to pay for, Peter ends up slinking back to Aunt May and sleeping in the homeless shelter. Even the homeless in Manhattan will turn their nose up on you if you drop a single hundred dollar bill on them. So I don't know why Aunt May thinks three hundred dollars is going to get Peter anywhere. Hey Jeff, congrats on the ceremony today. I'll be glad when it's over. A truck full of armed demons scares me less than public speaking. When did Jeff get Spider-Man's number? Why would one of Fisk's men overseeing one of his properties have Wilson Fisk as an unknown caller? I would imagine calls from the boss come through pretty often and are considered important. Have you ever wondered why no one in video games ever uses a case on their smartphone? The demons, who's their leader? Keep my men alive and maybe I'll tell you. It's actually in your best interest to tell Spider-Man who leads the demons since they are currently taking over your turf while you were in prison. <laughs> Spider-Man survives this. Need a plan. Need a plan real fast. 
crashing the chopper was your plan. Did you never consider that might cause it to crash into the city? Half of the city gets wrecked by a helicopter carrying a transformer, yet they decide to carry on with the rally like nothing ever happened. You don't think the mayor and one of the city's finest officers might be needed to deal with that situation? And why would the demons put together two big jobs on the same day? Lee was planning to bomb the campaign rally for Osborne with suicide bombers. Had that been cancelled due to the commotion his men caused at the construction site, his plan would have had to been cancelled as well. I mean, come on, you saved Spider-Man. I'm pretty sure that makes you an official superhero. <laughs> a superhero? <laughs> or... Maybe I'm just a guy who doesn't give up. Jeff is throwing up so many death flags, he might as well talk about retiring from the force and going on that vacation he always promised with his wife and son. I, I could come over, uh, I'll come. MJ has that classic, I can't believe I used to sleep with you smile. I know it so well. Peter was only knocked out by a transformer for a few seconds. Being near an explosion puts him down for the count so Miles can take over. I suppose when you aren't a Spider-Man yet, you still need ledge paint to point out the surfaces you can climb. The stealth system in this game is built on Peter being above enemies and picking them off. So when MJ and Miles have to sneak around on foot, it comes off as awkward and the demons are more blind than a genome soldier. Enough! We have to leave. Now. Just because Lee said let's go, doesn't mean you can't finish what you started. Dad! Going from PG to PG-13, my dude. Jeff is dead. Still need to rescue the trapped civilians. Is there something stopping her from using the passenger side door? Even if she can't get out, she's hardly in danger. Silver Sable is a mercenary Osborne hired to hunt down the demons. However, if you pay attention, you will notice she doesn't actually do anything in the game. It feels more like she's here to help raise awareness for her upcoming movie. Peter's spider sense comes and goes depending on when the plot needs him to be unaware of something dangerous about to happen to him. But I could always use more help. You know anyone? Actually, I do. His name is Miles Morales. Why does that sound familiar? His father was being honored at City Hall. Yeah, Miles should totally come and work at the place owned by the man who killed his dad. All the important information, plus a friggin' key, are in the middle of the book cliche. Remember how you told me about Lee's corrupting touch? I think I just saw it in action. How? Some perfectly nice homeless people just jumped me. Thing is, they had glowing eyes. Where I come from, we call that meth. You might want to scale down your controller a bit, Doc. That thing outclasses the original Xbox Duke controller. Better guard this empty elevator shaft with every single one of our men. Standish has a man bun. You know he programs. What happened to all those demon guards Spider-Man webbed up in this elevator shaft? I can't imagine they survived this. It would be bad form to hold a Halloween party where multiple people dress up as Spider-Man's greatest enemies. You're basically idolizing mass murderers. One reason you don't do hollow mirror sections in games is because mirrors don't work with rasterized graphics. This sin brought to you by NVIDIA. RTX on, bitches. Someone left their infamous second son main character lying around, which is weird because Insomniac didn't even make that game. You recently began working with someone in an Oscorp lab. How do, you, how do you know that? We don't have much time, Isaac. Tell me his name. If you can mind control people, why even lead with interrogation? <laughs> there go the Pornhub servers again. Let's get really close to Spider-Man before we open fire. Talk about lucking out. Norman Osborn had this image slideshow of the exact information regarding Devil's Breath open on his computer that Peter was looking for. I guess Norman just wanted to review something he already knew all about. It's designed to cure diseases, but in its current form, it's like a bioweapon. So in conclusion, our cure-all for genetic diseases actually kills people. If this gets out, PR nightmare. Oh, and lots of panic and death. But whatever, some drawbacks are worth the risk. You knock a man out, destroy my background research, and the best you've got is sorry, Charlie. Is everything a joke to you? To be fair to Peter, Standish did have a gun pointed at MJ during their chat. We broke up because you wouldn't stop treating me like a baby. Don't do this, MJ. Don't do that, MJ. Oh, that's too dangerous, MJ. I may not have super spider powers, but I'm not made out of glass. You can't complain about not wanting to be saved when you constantly put yourself in situations where you probably need to be saved. This has to be the world's slowest origin story, just not for the hero. You're Spider-Man. You're the amazing Spider-Man. <laughs> You're the spectacular Spider-Man. And you're the ultimate spider Oh, Not anymore, I guess. One boxing lesson later, and Miles is ready for super heroics. Miles employs the same line of sight hacking apps used in Watch Dogs. Rather than walk around this block where Sable has a checkpoint, Miles decides to put himself in danger by sneaking through it so he can reach the shelter a few minutes earlier. Hey, um, sorry I'm late, man. Oh, no, no, I'm just glad you're here. You sound suspiciously like Spider-Man, who I am a huge fan of and just spoke to five minutes ago. Tributes continue to pour in for Officer Jefferson Davis, the hero killed in the City Hall bombing. Exposition News Network. We deliver the news, especially when it's about your dead father. Let's transport this deadly virus through a city of millions in a padded case inside a normal sedan even though we know a terrorist group is after it. 
The devs are going to owe the Scarecrow royalty checks for this sequence. Teleportation is always used to be a dick cliche. Despite Spider-Man being unconscious after the crash, Lee didn't bother killing him. Let's put ourselves in the heads of MJ and give her my manly deep voice. Listen here, Peter. I don't need to be saved. That's why I'm not going to tell you when I do something stupid or about my hunch that the demons will target the air dispersal device invented by Oscorp and held at Grand Central Station. Apparently Oscorp has never heard of a display model that doesn't actually function. Also, maybe don't create an air dispersal device when you are also developing a virus that kills people and maybe don't display it in Grand Central Station with minimal security. Listen, I'm a reporter. I have a direct line to Mayor Osborne. So does Lee. He just called him and told him to arrive in 30 minutes or he releases the virus. You'll want to detach the wires from the battery first. Trace the wires to the other end and unplug them from there. This is an air dispersal device that isn't even finished. Not a booby trap time bomb. You could do any number of things to stop it from working, including removing the virus vial from it. last time. You realize what this means, right? This game could be a direct continuation of Sam Raimi's Spider-Man movies. There were a lot of people on that subway train. Derailing it so hard that it shoots through the ceiling and onto the street is not going to end well for a lot of them. Just store that deadly virus unsecured in the back of a truck like we didn't learn anything from five minutes ago. Where do his tentacles go when retracted? I mean, his back was flush just a second ago, so I can only assume the tentacles retract inside his body when not in use. Did you have to make them look that evil with glowing claws and spikes? You weren't exactly planning to become a villain after this. So when you're casting your vote, remember what I've done. We are all safer now than we have ever been. Liar! This is the first case of the Exposition News Network creating a supervillain. We are all safer now than we have ever been. Let's run through the tally of crimes that happened just this week. First Fisk's men have a shootout with the police, a helicopter tore up downtown with a wrecking ball, a suicide bombing at your own campaign rally, and the near release of a biological weapon of mass destruction. Spokesperson for the police has confirmed that this was the truck carrying the device used in the Grand Central Terminal attack. First off, thanks once again, Exposition News Network. You've been very busy in this game. Second, that makes twice now the devil's breath has been stolen from a truck. It was a coordinated attack. Must have been planned from the outside. Every cell block is breached. We're minutes away from every prisoner in Rikers walking right up Fifth Avenue. Rikers is an island prison with a single bridge connecting it to the mainland. Just station police on the bridge and none of the escaping inmates will be able to leave. They got into the armory. Is that bad? That sounds bad. Rocket launchers. Why would you ever store rocket launchers in a prison armory? I'm slipping! Gotcha. You're not slipping, you're crashing. Either the prison kept all the suits worn by supervillains here on the raft, which would be incredibly stupid, or in the course of one evening, Dr. Octopus found them before also taking the devil's breath and staging the prison break. First and final warning. Stay out of our way. What makes you think that would ever work? Devil's Breath is a CRISPR-based retrovirus designed to cure genetic diseases but actually kills people by attacking their immune system. So why in the ever-loving hell is it an airborne virus if the intention was to administer it through injection? A little late in putting on the mask, Doc. You already broke the vial and that stuff went everywhere. Also, your tentacles are now contaminated with the virus as well as your clothes, hair, and skin. So unless you fully decontaminate before removing the mask, you will still be infected. This is why CDC wears fully sealed suits when handling biological agents. On May is dying cliche. The doctor said you still have 14 broken bones. And those broken bones will not affect his performance at all. And neither will the poison Scorpion injected him with. Peter, are you available? We need help at Feast Sister's side of town. The Veterans Center in Harlem? What's wrong? Men from Rikers are demanding food and supplies. The staff are barricaded inside, but they need help. What exactly does Aunt May and Miles expect Peter to do about escaped prisoners threatening to shelter uptown? Yeah, we know he's Spider-Man, but given the current context, this seems like you're asking Peter to deal with something he could never be expected to deal with. Peter's webbing was able to hold up a falling construction crane earlier in the game. You're telling me he can't do the same trick with a wooden floor? If Dr. Octopus had this much virus residue on him that it left a trail that Spider-Man can track back to his hideout, then Dr. Octopus should also be dying from the plague. Octavius only just became a villain after he installed the neural interface which affected his personality and amplified his hatred of Osborn. Yet somehow, in less than a day, he set up this hidden base, came up with a plan that made use of imprisoned supervillains, and even came up with a ways to convince them to go along with him. You know, little things like finding a way to turn Electro into pure energy curing cancer for Vulture, removing Rhino's armor and clearing all of Scorpion's debts by taking out loans. Icarus was a ruse to get you into position. 
If you figured Spider-Man would find this place, letting him live at the raft was a waste of breath. Also, had you not gotten Peter on video call, this bomb might have actually killed him. The simultaneous fight against Electro and Vulture is actually the best fight in the game. <laughs> Back when Scorpion stung Peter on the raft, it didn't give him the dark web mushrooms experience it does now. I had such high hopes for you, Peter. Such lofty ambitions. You could have been a great scientist. Hallucinations will always, always tell you how much you suck. Not only do I think you just killed Scorpion by locking him in there with Rhino, I highly doubt that would be sufficient at holding Rhino inside. That building's full of Sable's men. If they spot me, other residents could get hurt in a firefight. I know, but I might be able to get in undetected. Peter just made up one huge excuse for why he can't sneak into Osborne's penthouse to find the lab location. I mean, there's only an open balcony that someone who can climb up walls could easily reach. Unlike MJ, who has to sneak past security while tasing them. Blueprint for the apartment. Tons of empty space right behind the wall with a family portrait. Who leaves space unused in a Manhattan apartment? The super wealthy. The better question would be, why Osborne left blueprints on his coffee table to give away the fact that he has a hidden room in his penthouse? You are staying here! The antiserum's ready, and I'm going to supervise production. You will be completely vulnerable without me. I seem to be completely vulnerable with you. I'm going alone. Yes, but it still makes little sense to go to the lab alone when the city is in chaos and your former business partner is on a rampage. Osborne must like to reminisce over the time he injected a little Chinese boy with something that gave him dark energy powers, who wound up killing his parents. Yeah, that's pretty much the backstory for Mr. Negative. No! Who's there? Must have been nothing, even though there's a smashed spider terrarium on the ground and only one exit from the secret room. Back to being useless. God, I can't wait for my movie to get here. This game is going to a lot of trouble to set up a reason for Miles having spider powers in the sequel. Wait, wait, hold on! It's too late. You're up! Worst trust exercise ever. Will help me secure Norman. After that, I make no promises. <laughs> you secure Osborne. I will talk to them. That was the quickest, let's set aside our differences and work together, too. I'll stay here, you go on ahead, ever. This is the only sample. Well, that's on you then, isn't it? Why make only one sample of an antivirus for a designer bug you created? They must have imbued that vial of antivirus with flex tape because it survives being in Lee's pocket while fighting Spider-Man, and then later survives Octavius falling off a building with it in his pocket. Still not going to kill you. He needs a hospital. No. No hospital. I think this medical laboratory you are in right now is a much better place to fix him up than a homeless shelter. Somehow, they managed to perform surgery on Peter without ever removing his suit and mask. In a matter of hours, right after his life-saving surgery, Peter constructs a new suit built specifically to combat Octavius. What makes it good at countering Dr. Octopus, I couldn't tell you. The only difference from his regular suit is the suit power, which only gives you a limited time period where you have unlimited spider gadgets, which are useless against Octavius. Peter had time to go through surgery and build a new suit during the time it took Octavius to climb up a tower. We don't have much time! Please! I'll turn over the anti-serum when Osborne pays for his crime! But you believe he's dead since you just dropped him off the building. You didn't see Spider-Man save him. Such a disappointment. Parker. You knew? Is it really that hard to figure out? He already saw you with Spider-Man's suit. That's because men like us have a duty. A responsibility. To use our talents in the service of others. Almost as if with great power comes... something. We'll need the entire sample as a base to produce more doses. How long will that take? A few hours. Yet you didn't do that back when you had the antivirus and Devil's Breath had been released into the city? Still no ketchup with those fries. Weird things have been going on. Like physically. Oh. Oh. Uh... Well, you know, you're at that age where, where your, your body starts to change. Miles is already way too old for you to assume he's talking about puberty. Sequel baiting. 